Namaskar. Today we are going to discuss about the Science and Technology Grade 9 Unit 2 Classification of Living Beings. I hope all of you are very fine and all are ready to take class. Please take out your books, copy and pen. Are you ready students? Let's start the class. Today we are going to discuss about classification of living beings. All of you know that classification means grouping. Grouping means based on the similarities and dissimilarities we group some things. Here we are going to discuss about living beings. So, we will group the organisms based on their similarities and dissimilarities. Okay, let us first discuss about some questions which are given in your textbook. All of you observe this slide there are different pictures are given and there are some questions also given. Here first picture is mushroom, second picture is bacteria, third picture is leech, fourth is euglena, fifth picture is goat and sixth picture is fern plant. Here some questions are there, all of you observe it. Okay, question number A, do these organisms have any differences in their cell? Yes, students, we have learned about the different types of cell in class 8 too. What type of cells you have learned? Yes, we have learned about the prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell. So, based on that your knowledge, we can find out whether these organisms cells are similar or different. Is there any differences among this organism based on their cellular structure? Yes, once you say mushroom, what type of cell is present in this? Eukaryotic cell and bacteria, does there any definite nucleus is seen in this? No. So, what type of cell is it? This is prokaryotic cell and here leech, euglena, goat and fern plant. All these organisms have same type of cell that is eukaryotic cell. That means here we can find out the difference be between these organisms even based on their cell too. Mushroom, leech, euglena, goat and fern plants have eukaryotic cell that is they have definite nucleus in their cell. But in case of bacteria they do not have that means the bacterial cell do not have a definite nucleus. So, it is a prokaryotic cell. Okay. Next question is what is there? Which organisms are similar? and dissimilar based on mode of nutrition. What do you mean by nutrition? Yes, we have learned in class 8 nutrition too. Yes, what is nutrition? Yeah, it is a process of taking food and taking energy from that food. So, here what kind of nutrition these organisms perform? Do you know? Yes, mushroom, where does it grow? How does it feed? Yes, mushroom grows on dead and decaying matters of living organism, even plants and animals decayed parts. That means it used to decay the dead parts of the plants and animals and absorb energy from there. So, this is a saprotrophic organism. The mode of nutrition is saprotrophic. Then bacteria. In case of bacteria, there are different types. 
Some bacteria have chlorophyll. They used to prepare their own food by photosynthesis. But some bacteria do not have chlorophyll. So, they used to take the food from other organism that is heterotrophic nutrition. And in case of leech, how do leech feed? Do you know? Yes, it used to suck blood from the vertebrates. So, what type of nutrition is that? Parasitic, that means it is taking the ready-made food from other organisms. So, it is a parasite. That type of nutrition is called parasitic nutrition. And euglena, this is a single cellular organism but it contains chlorophyll. So, it used to photosynthesize its own food that that's why it is a autotroph. And in case of goat, can goat prepare its own food? No, it used to take the food from plants. That means it used to eat the plants leaves. So, this is a heterotrophic type of nutrition. And in case of fern plant, it contains chlorophyll, so it can photosynthesize its food. This is also autotroph. So, in this case, we have find out different type of nutrition and based on the nutrition, organisms are different. And next question, question number C, what are the differences among them based on reproduction? Yes. What is reproduction? Yeah, reproduction means it is the process of giving birth to the new young one or producing own kind. That means some different organ, not different organism, own same kind of organisms. They used to reproduce, they used to produce their own kind of species that is called reproduction. And we have learned this reproduction also in class 8. So, what are the types of reproduction we can find out here? Are they similar in reproduction or different? Yes, in case of mushroom, mushroom reproduce through what? Yes, spores, mushroom reproduce through spores and bacteria, yes. Bacteria reproduce by fission. Its cell divide into two parts and each part will act as a new organism. And in case of leech, what type of reproduction? Here it perform sexual reproduction. These are unisexual organism and they perform sexual reproduction. In euglena, again there is fission. That means that is a kind of asexual reproduction. And in case of goat, this also reproduce sexually. It reproduce sexually. That means there is, these are also unisexual, male and female are different and they produce baby by sexual reproduction. And next one is fern plant. How does fern plant reproduce? Yes fern plant also reproduce through spores. So, these organisms perform various type of reproduction based on reproduction also they are different from each other. Then next question is question number D what is there? How can be these organisms arranged in ascending order of evolution? What is evolution? Yes, evolution means Development of organism from primitive to advanced one. Okay, here which organism is most primitive among this? Yes, bacteria is the primitive one. So, first we write that means prokaryotic organism. So, it is a bacteria first. Then after that, other are eukaryotic, but among these five, which one is most primitive? Okay, single celled organism that is euglena. Then we can arrange it first. Then after, which one? Among four, mushroom, leech. Then what is there? 
goat and fun plant. Here these are all are eukaryotic organism, but in some there is cell wall, but in some there is no cell wall. For example, leech and goat has cell without that means cell without cell wall, but mushroom and this fun plant both of them has cell wall in their cell. So, we can separate them in that way. So, in among these leech and goat which one is first? Leech. Why? It is a invertebrate. Yes. And goat is a vertebrate. So, first we arrange leech then what? Goat. In another way in among that means between this mushroom and fern which one is primitive? Can we say primitive or something? We can't compare here. One has even though both has cell wall, but one has chlorophyll, one do not have chlorophyll. So, first we arrange that mushroom, then we keep the fern as more advanced than the mushroom. Okay? In this way, we can arrange these organisms in a evolutionary trend or the in a order of evolution. Okay, next. Today we are going to discuss about the taxonomy. What does it mean? Yes, taxonomy is the branch of biology which deals with the classification that means identification, classification and nomenclature of the organisms. Okay, what is identification? For example, if you have find some new organism or new plant in your garden, first of all what you do? You try to identify it whether you have seen before or not. Okay? Then after identifying what you do? In which group does it belongs to? You start to match it with the already known plants or animals. Then what you do? Then after that the name is given to the organism. So, therefore, this taxonomy is the branch of biology which deals with all this process. Identification, classification, and nomenclature of organisms. The first time this was this that means studied and systematically proposed by the scientist called Carolus Linnaeus. Carolus Linnaeus is the scientist who studied about this all process. He was the first person who did classification and name nomenclature of the organisms in a systematic way. There were many scientists studied about this, but he was the first person who did it in a systematic way or the scientific way. Therefore, he is called father of modern taxonomy. Who is the father of modern taxonomy? Yes, Carolus Linnaeus is the father of modern taxonomy. Now, how the classification is done? What is the hierarchical order of classification? Just once we observe how classification is done. Okay? Here there is a hierarchical order of classification. Here when we group the organism that these are grouped in a different ways. That means there are different order. First largest group that is kingdom. In this kingdom there are many organisms, many phylum or many divisions. Then in inside this kingdom there are many phylums and which there is either in case of plants we say division, in case of animals we say phylum. Okay? There are many phyla. So, uh, if we go to next group that is phylum or division, again within phylum or division there are many classes and within the class again there are many orders. That means, we are we are dividing it class into orders, orders into family, family into genus, genus into species. So, in this way there is a hierarchical order of classification. Here for example, in case we here I have taken the example two example one from plant and one from the animal. In plant I have taken this mustard plant. 
this mustard belongs to kingdom plantae why yes it it is a plant and within the plantae kingdom there are so many divisions out of that this mustard belongs to division tracheophyte in this tracheophyta all the plants possess xylem and phloem here mustard also possess xylem and phloem so it belongs to tracheophyte and within this division tracheophyta there are many classes out of the those this mustard belongs to angiosperm as it possess closed seed that means seed, seed is enclosed inside the fruit then within this class angiosperm there are many orders out of that it belongs to brassicals and within this brassicals also there are many family the mustard belongs to family brassicaceae and within this brassicaceae there are many genus out of that this belongs to brassica within this brassica genus again there are many species the single species of this mustard is campestris okay and in the in case of animals here i have taken the example of human being human being belongs to kingdom animalia yes it is a animal so it belongs to animalia and within this animal kingdom there are many phyla out of that phyla this human being belongs to chordata within this chordata there are many classes out of that human being belongs to mammalia and within this mammalia there are many orders but human belongs to primates and inside this primates there are many families and out of those families human being belongs to hominidae and within this family hominidae there are many genus out of that human modern human being belongs to homo and this homo within the homo also there are different species out of this human modern human being species is sapiens in this way the hierarchical order of classification is done okay after this we how this actually while naming the organism there are use of genus and species we discuss about it okay what is nomenclature what do you mean by nomenclature do you have name yes my name is mina shrestha i have two words in my name then my shrestha is my surname which is common to all the members of my family but meena is the specific to me only if i was called see i am called that meena shrestha then i only represent but if it is said shrestha family then all the members of my family belongs to that shrestha so in the similar way the while naming the organism in a scientific way there are different ways of naming the organism so the scientific process of giving name to the organisms is called nomenclature scientific process of giving name to an organism is known as what nomenclature in this nomenclature also there are different methods while naming the organism different methods are used here we discuss only about the binomial system of nomenclature okay what is binomial system of nomenclature just now i have given my example yeah here there is a picture see mango the name of mango here it is written mangifera indica yes here two names just like my name mina shrestha here also there are two names are given mangifera indica okay this naming this process of naming by by means two nomial means name the process of giving name to an organisms in two names or two words is called binomial system of nomenclature okay binomial system of nomenclature means by means two 
nomial means naming. So, if two names are given to an organism or if name is given in two words that is first time it was proposed by Carolus Linnaeus by using two Latin words. While naming the organism in a scientific way, he used two Latin words to name an organism. This process of naming organism in two words of Latin language that is called binomial system of nomenclature. Here in case of this out of two names, here see there are two names for the mango, mangifera indica. The first name is genus and second name is species. This first name is genus, it is also known as generic name and second name is species, it is also known as specific name. Okay? And this in this way we are naming the organism, giving genus and species, that means naming the organism by using genus and species is called binomial system of nomenclature. Now, there are certain rules to draw the or to write the binomial system of nomenclature. Let us see what are those rules. Here the name of goat is given. What is there? Capra hircus. Capra hircus. Here also two names and another one cabbage. What is there? Brassica oleraceae. Brassica oleraceae. In this way, there is these two organisms are named in two words. But do you observe here something different from this up here see? The first name of both is started from what? Capital letter. Yes? And the second name is started with small letter. So, what it indicates? The genus names should start with capital letter and the species name should start with small letter. Yes? That means first letter of genus is capital and the first letter of species name is small letter. Then after see here while writing that means while typing name what is it is done? It is italicized. Okay? But when we write the name what we do? What we do? We underline it separately. Let us see. Capra Hircus. Like this, we underline it separately. Okay? While writing, after writing the name, we underline genus and species separately, but when we type it, while typing, it is just italicized. Uh, while typing, in italic letter, we type the scientific name. For example, Panthera Leo, the scientific name of lion is Panthera Leo. Here also, the genus name is start with the capital letter and a species name is start with a small letter, then these are italicized. Okay. Next one is, let us see what is genus and what is species. Already we have discussed about the genus, yes. In the hierarchical order, we have studied about where the genus come and where the species come. Let us see some example. What is this? Lion. What is the scientific name of lion? Just now we have seen, yeah. What is that? Panthera Leo. Okay. And similarly, another organism. What is this? Leopard. What is its scientific name? Panthera pardus. And another organism. These three are similar. And tiger. Tiger's scientific name is Panthera tigris. What is the similarity among them? See, 
all their that means all these three animal belongs to the same genus that is panthera 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 and but the species of lion species of leopard and species of tiger is different so let's discuss about the genus already we have known that means within the genus there are so many species i already told you while giving example of mustard and human being in that chart yes so what is genus then i told you within the genus there are many species but this human being belongs to sapiens like that mustard belongs to campestris i have told you here also just let's discuss what is genus genus means it is a group of species which have similar characteristics just now i have given the example of lion tiger and leopard all of these organism have some similar characteristics but they have some different characteristics also yeah even though they are different species some characteristics are similar to each other so those closely related species belong to same genus okay the group of organism which are very closely related those are called what genus and next one is here are some example another example dog and wolf okay dog which is tamed in our house and wolf which used to reside in the jungle but these two belongs to the same genus that is canis okay and the species of the dog is different and the species of the wolf is different that is the scientific name of dog is canis familiaris and the scientific name of wolf is canis lupus see when you see the some characteristics are similar and some characteristics are different and next one is what is species what do you mean by species species means what particular that means the group of individuals which can be interbreded which can be interbreded and can produce a fertile offspring for example if goat reproduce what produce it used to produce its own baby again they can be reproduce but if we reproduce by cross matching of tiger and lion it will produce either liger or tiger but those are not fertile because they are from different species tiger and lion are of different species even though they belongs to the same genus but they cannot produce the fertile offspring therefore species is the group of individuals which can reproduce or which can interbreed and reproduce the fertile offspring those only belongs to the same species now for example there is already we have seen that just in case of tiger lion and leopard the genus was same but species was different in a tiger what is there there is panthera tigris only tigris is the species only tigris can be interbreded okay all panthera cannot be interbreded to produce the fertile offspring therefore the species is the smallest unit even in the chart also we have seen the most bottom is the species therefore the species is called basic unit of taxonomy and based on these characteristics can we perform a activity let's see how can how could you arrange these organisms easily okay see here i have given some pictures on the board yeah here some pictures are given can you arrange them 
by close relation which are closely related with each other can you say we have learned about the genus species classification to so many things yeah can you hear see here there is mustard plant lion then what is this donkey then potato what is this horse tiger what is this tomato and what is this spinach okay there are different organisms are in the board can you arrange can you find out the closely related one can you okay let's try here mustard plant which is closely related to which one this is mustard okay and there is another one is yes obviously it is a plant so it should be related to the plant only but which one which one yes potato tomato and spinach which one yes this is similar to this one so this is one group okay let's see which one is closely related here it is lion yeah which one is this is animal yeah so with which this is closely related either donkey or tiger or horse which one yes it is already in the same position yes lion and tiger are closely related and next what is there there is donkey and with which this is related yes obviously it is horse and last one which one is there there is potato and tomato okay these two are also closely related so in this way if we know the characteristics then we can relate them we can keep them in a same group so this process of grouping the organisms based on their similarities is called classification here is also a simple classification okay students okay let's know some hierarchical order of human being how it is classified just already i have explained you on the above chart here uh, once again see when we take the example of classification of human being here kingdom is what animalia why it is animalia see all the elements animals along with the human beings belongs to the kingdom animalia then phylum chordata already i have explained you why it belongs to the chordata that means all the vertebrates which have vertebral column they belongs to the phylum chordata and class mammalia which possesses mammary gland all those belongs to the mammals or mammalia and next one is order primates in this order primates what are the organisms belongs to there monkey gorilla gibbons lemurs and human belongs to the order primates that means there are so many organisms which are closely related okay and next one is which one family hominidae and in this family hominidae there are chimpanzee gorilla orangutan human belongs to the family hominidae then within the fam family there are many genus and in genus homo there are what human dragon man and other organism belongs to the genus homo but in modern human being that means species that is sapiens in that only modern human being belongs to the species sapiens in this way we classify the organism and we make a order of classification or the hierarchical order of classification to where based on this we are naming the organisms in a binomial system of nomenclature that is genus and species now let's see some examples see they, these are given in your textbook also see just one two i i just i show you here mustard that is brassica campestris and the scientific name of p is pisum sativum man homo sapiens cat felis catus dog canis lupus okay cow bos taurus maize gia maize paddy oryza sativa tiger panthera tigris already you know 
okay okay we have learned so many things about the taxonomy binomial system of nomenclature let's okay let's know what you have known today from our class just to, i want to check through some questions okay find the correct alternative or the correct answer of the following questions first question is who proposed the binomial system of nomenclature? Yes, all of you are ready? Excited to answer, yeah? Okay, which one is the correct answer? Yes, very good. Carolus Linnaeus. Okay, next question, let's try. Which is the correct way of writing scientific name of human being? Here scientific na name of human being is given Homo sapiens, here genus species both capital in B, genus is start with a small letter, species also start with a small letter. In C, genus capital and species small letter. In D, how genus is started with small letter and species is started with capital letter. So, which one is the correct one? Very good, this is question number, that means option number C that is Homo where the genus start with the capital letter and species start with the small letter that is the correct way of writing scientific name. Last question, which is the basic unit of taxonomy? Okay, already you have known? Yes, yes, very good, species is the basic unit of taxonomy. Thank you dear students, we have discussed about the binomial system of nomenclature. In next class, we will discuss about the classification of living beings based on five kingdom system. Thank you.